Much of the classroom management literature is prescriptive. Do this, not that. There is a mechanistic logic that drives them. Management is understood as a set of systems and structures, checks and balances, rubrics and measurables. Solutions are sought through procedural means. Change the seating chart, group students another way, differentiate content. Research within cultural relevant pedagogy, however, claims that creating safe and productive environments with a diverse student population requires more than the strategies recommended in the original classroom management literature. Historically, classroom management focused on implementing strategies and procedures. Your growth as a classroom manager correlated with the amount of strategies you could learn and how methodically you could implement them. Your job was analogous to a construction worker the strategies were equated to tools, and to be a better manager, you simply needed to add more tools to your teacher's tool belt. Unlike building a house, however, building human beings is different. People have histories, cultures, values, personalities, and experiences. Let's just say our students are infinitely complicated. A formulaic approach to students without catering to their individuality is doomed to fail. As research demonstrates the importance of teacher-student relationships in the classroom, especially in urban contexts, it is essential that we make a linguistic shift when it comes to classroom management. Our terminology should, ref should reflect the relational aspects of teaching. How are you building trust with students? How are you developing your presence? What are you learning about students to enhance rapport? How are you remaining authoritative without being an authoritarian? How are you using sympathy without letting it devolve into pity? What are you doing outside of school that's exciting and you can share with students? How are you working on your enthusiasm and positivity? What did you learn about one of your students' hometown? How do you practice humility? Because teaching is relational, we need to think in moral terms. While university students can learn from a teacher they dislike, this is usually not the case for underserved or diverse students. Perhaps my biggest blind spot when entering the urban classroom was the concept of learning from affiliation. In middle-class American contexts, Particularly among white students, authority and rules are used to maintain order. In these contexts, statements such as, because I said so, are effective. The appeal to authority works better in many white and American contexts. However, when I lived in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia for three years, I learned that the expectations for building and developing relationships was much higher. Time was not money in Georgia. Time was spent working on brotherhood and friendship. The culture was more communal in this sense. This is the same for many diverse students in our classrooms. They learn better when they have built a relationship with the teacher. In fact, they expect this relational component more than your mainstream American students. This is why building trust and relationships is imperative in urban contexts. To sum up what I'm saying, to be better classroom managers, we must think more about the intangibles of teaching. I am not saying measurables, accountability, and rubrics are bad. What, am I, what I am saying is becoming a better classroom manager would be more effective and inspiring if we saw it more as a moral quest than an accumulation of strategies and tools.